He says again, it was at this point when Lisoko took the matter to social media with half truths and twisted the story. This one feels like a dream. It is heartbreaking. But sadly, it is a true story and someone else's reality. We have Lesoko Pasi, a mother to a three-year-old son, baby Kaone, who has been declared deceased by the father. She didn't see the body. She wasn't at a funeral. And she didn't even get to say her last goodbye to her son. Then there's her baby daddy. His name is Oberon Sungulani Matsufuki, but popularly known as Nduna, a tenderpreneur, CEO of Nduna Civil Engineering Services. According to Briefly, he's a Zimbabwean businessman who studied at TUT, Tony University of Technology. But some people are saying he's from Limpopo. These two people used to be in a romantic relationship. That's how, of course, their baby came to be. And like any other relationships, they had their problems until they broke up. However, they were forced to co-parent, but their co-parenting situation didn't go well, as eventually the court awarded Nduna, the baby's father, to be the primary caregiver of their son. And Lesoko has since been vocal about that, taken to a social media platform to voice her concerns, saying that she wasn't very comfortable with the way her baby daddy Nduna was caring for their son. And she also says that at one point Nduna wanted to take their baby to his home state in Limpopo for a ritual without her being there. And that at a time the baby was only two months. But she refused and he was livid and that was the beginning of her being tormented. She says she fought a good fight for this boy. Now Nduna, her baby's father, has broken his silence regarding this matter. But before we get into that, let's go through what Lisekho had said in the first place. She had said she suspects foul play and her suspicions were that her baby father deleted their son. Lisekho remembers getting a call from her baby daddy Nduna that there's an emergency involving their son, but the paramedics had been called to attend to the matter. Nduna informed Lesejo that their son had drowned in a swimming pool and required medical attention. But due to the nature of their toxic relationship and a nasty custody battle, Lesejo says that her instinct was to immediately get the police involved. Upon waiting for feedback from the Olfans Fontaine corps, Lesejo called the nearest hospital emergency line and she was informed that there was no recorded near drowning case. So with panic setting in, Lesoko called back her baby's father, Nduna, who had her talk to Vusi, and Vusi couldn't give her the full details, but the phone was later given to some white guy who claimed to be head of security, who then informed Lesoko that her son was deceased. Lesoko remembers Nduna, her baby daddy, telling her that their son was quickly pulled out of the water by the two helpers responsible for looking after their son. And now her son is deceased. She spoke to the emergency attendant who also confirmed this tragic news and turning back to her baby's father who seemed nonchalant and couldn't provide straightforward answers. Lesoko informed him that her family was to come to the crime scene of which he refused. Eventually the police arrived but the baby's father, Nduna, refused Lesejo from talking to them. Nduna, who also failed to inform his own family about his son's passing, pressured Lesejo to arrive at his place for funeral arrangements without involving her family as well. Nduna's only interest, according to Lesejo, was for their son to be buried as soon as possible. The following day being the soonest, which coincided with his birthday. Lesoko informed her sister and spoke to Nduna's mother, who also had no idea about her grandson having passed. And according to Lesoko, Nduna informed her that her family should only meet with him at the burial site, which raised concerns, leading Lesoko to believe that her baby's father Nduna knew more than he was telling. Lesoko shared all this on her Instagram stories, everything that transpired leading to the passing of her son and how her baby daddy buried her son without her consent, without her being there, without her having seen 
the body of her son and initially women for change was not saying anything about this story but upon being called out they ended up sharing their story but in them sharing the story they chose strategically to not mention Nduna's name after being called out about them not mentioning his name as well they're saying that their main reason for not mentioning his name is because he has not been found guilty of anything just yet however these are the very same people who were shining a light and shaming chris brown anyway lisoko shared a lot on her instagram stories we can go through that you can let me know in the comment section if you want us to go through everything that she said on her instagram stories and we'll do that now nduna has laid his son to rest without the mother being there and he made sure to do so during his birthday he has also broken in silence about the death of his son kaone and his version of events and he's saying that on the 23rd of october 2024 he received a call from his two helpers while he was in santin making his way to rosebank the helpers informed him that his son kaone had fallen into a pool and he's struggling to breathe he says right then and there he immediately called 911 midstream paramedics and quickly made a u-turn back to the house on his way back to the house he immediately called the mother of their son lisoko Pasi, informing her of the incident and according to him lisoko responded by saying she was on her way to limpopo to discuss the estate of her late grandmother with her family and asked to be kept posted 20 minutes later nduna says he arrived at his house and found the paramedics already there at the scene resuscitating their son Gaune in his bedroom with the security of the estate being present while the paramedics were busy doing their job nduna says he was constantly on the phone with lisiko giving her real-time updates on the situation however lisiko in her stories she says during the call with nduna she asked him to switch to video call so she can see everything that was happening and nduna refused Anyway, let's continue. Nduna says 45 minutes later, their son Kaone was declared dead. That's when he handed the phone over to the attending paramedics so they can break the news to Lesejo, as he wasn't in any condition to speak at this point. About five minutes later, Lesejo called and she spoke to Lan, who is the estate manager, who also confirmed the devastating news to her. Nduna says he then asked Lesuho to come back and, and terminate her trip to Limpopo, but Lesuho refused, stating that the trip was serious and she must partake in the family meeting in discussing her grandmother's assets. Nduna says the head of security of the estate called the police officers and shortly after they arrived, the forensic team also arrived as well as the pathologist and he says later that day around 7 p.m gaune's body was then dispatched to the mortuary nduna says the police officers advised him to head to the police station olfans fontaine the following morning to obtain a case number and then head to jamiston to identify his son's body before half past 3 p.m he says all this information was being communicated with his son's mother Lesejo. On the 24th of October, Nduna says he headed to Olfans Fontaine police station accompanied by his father, uncle and his two brothers to obtain the case number and Lesoho Pasi had agreed to this arrangement. While at the police station, the attending officer advised them that they were going to need the child's birth certificate when identifying his body at Jamiston. Nduna says he didn't have the birth certificate with him, so the officer called Lesiho to bring along the child's birth certificate to the mortuary for identification purposes. Nduna says it was at this point when Lesiho decided she was not going to participate and she was still in Limpopo, he says. Lesiho informed the officer that Nduna can use the custody documents and a copy of the birth certificate to apply for a reprint at home affairs he says he then went to home affairs for a reprint and proceeded to the mortuary to identify their son's body alongside his two brothers around quarter to four nduna says lesejo called and said she's back from limpopo and was now at centurion and she needed transport from the mall to the mortuary 
Nduna says he informed Lesekho that the identification process has been completed since she initially refused to participate and the details left was to arrange their son's funeral. He says again it was at this point when Lesekho took the matter to social media with half truths and twisted the story. Meanwhile, he did his utmost best to communicate and involve her. The evening of the 24th of October, Nduna says he received a call from a lady who identified herself as Lesoko's sister, who was inquiring about the funeral arrangements and what transpired that led to the child's untimely death. Since they couldn't get any information from Lesoko, who was only posting on her Instagram stories. On the 25th of October, which was Nduna's birthday, around 12 during the day, Nduna says Lesekho Pasu called and asked what time will Gaone be arriving at Nduna's house from the mortuary so that herself and her family can see the body and be part of the funeral proceedings. Nduna says he therefore told Lesekho to be by his house as well as her family around 2 p.m. for the private viewing of the body. At 1 Nduna says he received a call from Olfans Fontaine police station saying Lesekho would like to come to the funeral but needed confirmation that she will be allowed. He says he informed the police officer telephonically that Lesekho was allowed to come and they had already spoken about it as parents. To his surprise, Lesekho didn't show up at his house to see her son and also didn't show up at the burial site. The funeral therefore proceeded without her and her involvement. Nduna says he would like to confirm that the funeral was done lawfully with all the required documents in place, including a death certificate and a burial order. The latest update is on the 26th of October 2024, Nduna says three officers assigned for the inquest came to his house to take separate statements from himself and the two helpers who were present at the house at a time of the incident. And also Sonja Smith, a lead funeral group, has responded in a media statement denying and deeming the allegations against them untrue and malicious regarding the death of Gaune Becker. They deny any wrongdoing in assisting Duna Hua code the legal guardian father to bury his son who passed away in tragic circumstances. In court, the matter was reported as required to the SAPS. An inquest was opened. Forensic pathology services then contacted a post-mortem investigation. The death was registered at the Department of Home Affairs and the burial was arranged and took place with all required legal documentation having been supplied, including a burial order. They further stated that threatening comments cause threats of harm to property and to their personnel have been reported to the SAPS and the public should desist from making such comments and they are also threatening legal action against anyone making false and defamatory statements in public. And they are standing on the fact that they were appointed by Nduna to assist with all funeral arrangements. And they concluded by saying that all the queries and questions that may arise pertaining baby Gaunes matter should be referred to their father Nduna, not them. Okay. This is a very sad situation that you can never wish even on your worst enemies. And my hope is for all parties involved to get the answers they need and for closure to happen and for justice to be served for this baby. Otherwise do share your thoughts in the comment section and also remember to subscribe, like, share, until next time, bye and thank you for watching.